So, uh, um, <laughs> thank you very much. Welcome, welcome to uh, this episode of Meetup. Not uh, not the live streams, uh, as uh, <laughs> as many of you know. Uh, welcome wherever you are. I think we do have a good uh, representation from multiple places. We do have uh, people from India. Uh, naturally, Robin from UK. I see a few people. Uh, I see Dorinella from Bucharest. Well, welcome, welcome everyone. Um, it's great to have everyone. Hey, how's it going? So, uh, in um, in this part of the presentation, I will ask you if you can mute yourself, and uh, like whenever we have a Q and A, you will unmute yourself, and we can uh, we can chat about your questions, and uh, hopefully, it sounds alright. All right. Uh, okay. Okay. Let's see. Um, great. So uh, today. So what's going to be doing today? Um, just write down in uh, in the chat window a couple of things that I want to know. Uh, if you're a Java developer and and uh, if you're very new to the Kafka streams uh, or like what's your level of uh, Kafka streams. This talk intended to be uh, like Kafka streams 101. However, I feel that some of the people who already know some stuff might learn something. So I try to be like a, um, creative <laughs> about the content. So uh, wait for a few seconds while I'm switching to my slides. All right. Okay. So I will be talking about uh, uh, Kafka streams as a library for event streams and uh, for, for stream processing. And uh, for those of you who are uh, don't know me, uh, it's fine. It's great that you're here. Uh, my name is Victor, and I work at Confluent as a developer advocate. Um, and I uh, talk to developers. I help to prepare some of the content for developers. I love developers, and I really love uh, their questions. And I really love help them to you know go and be successful with uh, you know open source tools or whatever tools that we develop at Confluent. Uh, and Confluent is a company that, uh, if you don't know, today celebrates six years. Um, and I highly recommend to um, follow today's day because it's going to be like a plenty of interesting meetups. I'm just opening uh, this. I'm just like warming you up with uh, information about uh, uh, all things Kafka. And uh, today will be another meetup uh, by uh, Neil Busing and uh, even from our engineering team. So uh, stay tuned. This and after this meetup, right after this meetup, there's going to be live streams. Um, if you in this type of chat, and I will talk about this in, in a second. So um, uh, let let me uh, quickly talk about the uh, live streams while we didn't start yet. All right, cool. Um, the are uh, live streams. So live streams, it's a weekly show that I do every Tuesday, um, 9 a.m. Pacific time, 12 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, and where I'm like doing all, all things online. You can also ask questions. It's not like a meetup, uh, but it's more like a, kind of I'm chatting to people and stuff like that. So uh, you can go there on this uh, YouTube uh, YouTube channel. If you go to youtube.com slash confluent, you will see this video and you can put their reminders on. So it's going to be T minus 100 minutes, 104 minutes. So it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. Okay. So uh, today we're going to be uh, talking about stream processing. And I see some of the people are Java developers familiar with Kafka, new to streams. It's great. It's great that we have uh, many people who are new to streams. And uh, the goal is this presentation is to, you know, make you, you know, familiar with the streams so you would know how to develop a stream processing application. So essentially stream processing, it is a procedure that you execute on the you know set of events, messages as they arrive. So you're not waiting anything, you're not buffering, you're not performing kind of like a small batches, you know, message comes in, you're doing something with it, and you're good to go. In general, like if you were, if I want to generalize all this concept of event streaming platform, and uh, things like what happened in the world, there is a thing called event streaming platform that helps to capture and uh, helps to uh, work with events with the um, 
I, I'm wondering if there's a, there's a background noise that also disturbing to you, um, because I have a co-pilot here that is uh, uh, ma making some noises. I'm wondering if you hear them as well, uh, the way I hear, or it's it is it's okay. No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> okay, Michael, you are now also co-presenting with me, so stay 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 tuned. All right, streaming platform. Um, essentially, in order to uh, perform this processing, we need to capture these events first somewhere, and we need to store those events somewhere. And um, yeah, just uh, bear with me for a second, and I will. Uh, I actually, I don't know what to do at this at this point. So what what I can do here? So he's sitting here making noises. I don't have anything to shut him off, right, Michael? Michael, please. Can you let Daddy to work? Nope, nope. So, unfortunately, he doesn't have a mute button. All right, so uh, the stream platform allows us to accumulate data. And uh, after that, we can use a stream processing tool that can uh, convert the stuff to um, something useful that our application, our users, our um, uh, customers can consume. So we're going to be focusing today on this level where we perform this continuous computation. And this continuous computation can be performed in multiple different tools. Uh, you can use uh, tools like uh, Spark Streaming. Uh, you can use uh, tools like Kafka Streams. You can use tools like uh, Flink. Uh, key SQL DB and so far and so on. But today we're going to focus you know, on Kafka streams. Those tools like th that I just mentioned, they exist and you can use this. Um, it's just uh, skating out of control. Uh, the noise of baby is just too distracting for me and for presentation. So, uh, yeah. In uh, in a few words, if you never uh, if you never seen this. Um, if you've never seen this, uh, the streaming platform, what uh, makes a streaming platform? Um, the, the foundation of the streaming platform is Apache Kafka. And uh, as of today, as of uh, September of uh, 2020, we're still using Zookeeper in order to um, store some additional metadata for, uh, for information about the topics, information about the um, uh, topology of the cluster, service discovery, and so far and so on. Um, Apart from all this application that you developer uh, develop as a, as a Java developer, you rather use uh, a native uh, client library. So in this case, it's going to be um, mostly a library that implements uh, native Kafka protocol that understands how to talk to brokers, how to, how to get this data. And uh, this uh, native library is, uh, we call it assembly, assembly language of Kafka. So you don't go usually lower than a native client level. Uh, unless you want to develop your own client and you want to hack into Kafka protocol. Second thing is that uh, Kafka really don't care about what you store inside it, and uh, it's about uh, bytes that Kafka can receive over this uh, socket. Now, it is... Um, Kafka don't care, Kafka doesn't care. But as a, as a user, as a, as a developer, you do care because uh, usually you're sending messages. These messages need to make some sort, some sort of sense. And in this case, uh, you need to describe the structure of this message somehow. So in this particular case, um, if you Java developer, if you Java developer, you can simply uh, take uh, the class and uh, send these classes to your fellow developer, and they can uh, use this class to figure out like what kind of message you send. But this is not very, uh, this is not very, um, you know, the useful if you're not Java developers or you don't want to deal with the Java serialization, which is like very far from ideal thing. Um, in this in this case, uh, we need to find a way how we can describe those messages. And the schema registry comes into play where you need to not only describe messages in some intermediate format that uh, all multiple different languages can understand, but also um, store it in exchanges between multiple applications. So for developer, for you as a developer, this usually uh, happens like very transparent. So in this case, your application will um, a register scheme with scheme registry because it's included uh, in as a part of like an API. Um, and after that, uh, your application that needs to consume will use the same process to uh, read the data, read the schema, and deserialize. So 
any tool that needs to deal with uh, um, with these streams inside this uh, Kafka topic needs to uh, use uh, this native client library. And I already mentioned it is a kind of like assembly language of uh, of Kafka. It's a tool level. There's too many things that needs to be done, uh, and you can do this, um, and it's fine and uh, it's okay. However, sometimes you just want to move faster, and I want to show you today uh, how you can move faster using Kafka Streams application. Kafka Streams is a framework for dealing with this event. So it provides you higher level um, the APIs, fluent APIs. They call them the, the cells, but like I do have a, I I don't I don't buy it because for me it looks more like a uh, like a fluent API because the DSL in my book is slightly different. KSQL DB it is DSL uh, for for that matter. But uh, in you know who who am I to um, <laughs> to to judge? But uh, sometimes you will see this in uh, Kafka Streams documentation. There's like DSL, there's processor API, but all this is a Java API. So Java API that allows you to um, develop your applications. Now. Uh, KSQL DB, on the other hand, it is a another uh, KSQL. It's a language that KSQL DB implements. KSQL DB is a tool. KSQL is a language or DSL uh, that that exists to to work with these uh, stream processing applications. Um, there are some other tools that allows you to bring data in and data out. Uh, like uh, we are not gonna focus in on, on those today. Uh, Kafka Connect is a very useful tool to integrate with existing sources. And we do have uh, some experts here in the chat. Uh, and also go and subscribe to his YouTube channel. He's doing awesome videos. Recently, recently, he, re he released this video um, that's called Kafka Connect in 60 seconds. If you go there, Kafka Connect in... 60 seconds, and uh, we'll find this video here. And if you go to uh, YouTube channel, you'll find this gentleman. He was talking about Kafka in 60 seconds. Uh, you can do this after meetup between uh, live streams and uh, between this meetup and live stream. So you can uh, you can learn about the Kafka Connect. I'm not gonna focus it today. Uh, and there's some other tools allows you to integrate some of the places that um, um, say you don't have you don't have uh, the luxury for like developing uh, with Kafka streams. You want to just like a simple curl commands to send data in, send it out, and the REST proxy exists there that allows you to to do that stuff type of stuff. Okay. So um, that's it. So this is how the platform look like. And uh, all these things are tied together and they create this full-blown event streaming platform um, that uh, you're developing apps on top of. So, and uh, the, the Kafka was designed to be uh, distributed, uh, sharded, uh, and a highly scalable uh, system where you are mm, getting a multiple components that decoupled. So uh, you have a cluster of machines that decoupled from your, say, like a producer application that writes data to, to, to this application. And on the, on the bottom, uh, I don't have it here for some reasons, but on the bottom, usually you, you put the consumers and you can scale your producers and consumers um, to independently. So that's it. So it's, it is uh, like uh, the way how usually uh, we develop applications. And when I said assembly language, it's not like um, we need to operate with um, uh, things like uh, registers and manipulate with memory. But uh, I mean, it's just like a too cumbersome and API is really verbose. So I will give you like a very small use case that I want to uh, break down today. And I want to walk you through this. Uh, it's not even pseudo code. It's just a real code that you can execute, uh, but it does one simple thing. It just uh, performs aggregation. And this aggregation is too simple. It's just the counting messages with the same key. Um, very simple, uh, and uh, it's very easy to implement. There is a small things that you need to um, take care of. And let me break it down for you. So first of all, uh, because aggregation, uh, we consider aggregation we consider as a, as a, um, stateful stream processing operation, meaning that there will be some state. And what this state in this particular case? We need to have a count because in order to get result or get this like aggregated result 
um, we need to know the previous result for a particular key. So in this case, we need to have some sort of storage. So in this, in this, I will use like highly scalable and highly available and super fast uh, in memory storage called hash map. Um, but uh, it is not the point. Point is that we need to store intermediate result somewhere in order this to be um, available available for other applications. Now, uh, next thing, we're creating consumer and we're creating producer. And now consumer subscribes to a particular topic and reads the messages from the topics. And uh, let's uh, kind of drill down into um, the consumer code. And the consumer code uh, essentially just uh, reads the message and get the key, too fast, um, get the key. And after that, they put the count into uh, our results. So basically, this is only line of this code that I showed you previously. Like from, from this on, there's only one thing that is essentially, essentially is important here. And in this particular case, it is a, uh, where is it? Go back. So if we look into this one, all this code, it's just uh, to get us to the point where we need to do count, right? So too many things needs to be done in order to get this uh, um, get this done. I want to show you hopefully a uh, a better way in a few seconds. And now, so since we get this result, we need to write this back somehow. So we need to use a producer, and there's another code that we need to do um, in order to save it into um, into Kafka topic. So idea idea of stream processing: we're reading data, we're performing data, uh, some of the computation right back into Kafka. So this is like an infinite loop that we will be performing. Now, essentially, there is only one place where. Uh, we're doing this uh, stuff with producer. So once we get this result, we need to we get this count, and now we need to save it inside this producer. So, um, and there is after that, obviously, we need to uh, uh, commit offset to tell that um, we're done with this computation. So let's see let's see how it how it how it can be done with the um, with other approach, and. Uh, the, this is the very popular opinion that I hear uh, in internet sometimes when I'm talking about streams, is that uh, people have a harder, like uh, they have a like motivation <laughs> uh, problems where um, they feel that they need to convince themselves to um, use streams because they super satisfied if, if, if consumer and producer API. Um, and I get this, okay? I, I totally get this, and it, it's, uh, um, it's totally fine, and we still can be friends, but there's a two type of developers that, in my opinion, uh, can, you know, can bring this as argument. So essentially, if you are the framework developer, you're developing your own framework, and um, say, uh, you're writing new Shining framework, and we'll talk about this new Shining framework, what you need to do in order to implement this new Shining framework. Um, or there's a second type of developers, not only they develop a framework, but also they get paid by number of lines of code that they wrote, right? How many of you actually get paid by number of lines of code? I'm just curious if, you, um, <laughs> if you're one of those uh, people, uh, write down in comments and I would have a, uh, some cool tricks to you so you can increase number of line of codes and you get paid more. Um, just go there and write down in the comments, and we'll see. We'll see um, how many of you are get paid. Maybe I will need to get this job if I will get paid by a number of line of that I wrote. Um, not many. Not many. It's not a surprise because usually people get paid for results. People get paid for getting things done rather than okay. So I wrote this like a thousand lines of code and things like that. So essentially, the, uh, <laughs> let's talk about this framework that you're writing, okay? So the framework that uh, you think is good, but uh, let me show you Kafka streams. Like, it's even better, it's even better, it's even better. Let me actually write some code for you so you will see how, um, how fast um, and like how easy it to do, um, even for people like me, like I'm not the, <laughs> fastest typer or whatnot. Okay, 
So in this case, let me move this here. Um, again, uh, Kafka connect in 60 seconds. Uh, we need to, you know, this is some, uh, some rookie numbers, some rookie numbers. We need to pop these numbers up. And I hope uh, you will help to do that. So um, what we're gonna be doing? I will use my favorite website because uh, simply it allows me to do a lot of things. So uh, in, especially with Kafka, uh, it allows me to 100% uh, eliminate some of the configurations of things, but still I can be focused on my Kafka uh, 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 streams uh, logic. So in this case, I will be using Spring, uh, Spring uh, Boot here only as a framework that handles configuration and connection to Kafka. The rest of the stuff would be just 100% um, uh, your, your code. So uh, many of you know that you need to go to developer.confluent.io if you want to learn about things uh, around uh, stream processing. So this is why naturally this is my uh, the package name. And uh, today we have a meetup and I'll do Kafka streams. Uh, so what we're gonna be using here today, I will be using Kafka. Uh, it will be using uh, streams. Um, and I like to write less code. Maybe next time I will talk about Kotlin. So in this case, maybe I don't need to have a Lombok in this case. Uh, and I use Gradle project, obviously. We're not animals here. Uh, and Java 11, it's fine, okay? It's fine. How many of you are still using Java 8? Write down in the comments. I, I, I saw many uh, developers here. Okay, so I just generated this one. And if I go DL, uh, unzip key streams. And I will bring my IntelliJ idea. Still use 50% uh, of uh, Java 8. That's uh, <laughs> that's interesting. That's that's super cool. It's uh, what year is this? So Java Java eight is the new Java uh, is new Java six, right? <laughs> um, if you know what I'm talking about. Okay. So a uh, couple things. So my application will need a couple things. Um, so I will do class producer. Uh, uh, will do class uh, consumer. So I use these classes only to let's let's do this one. Okay. Let's just, just do producer. So in public uh, void uh, produce, and I will do stuff like this. Um, it's a component. In this case, I will be able to use a Kafka template, um, and I, I will do uh, enable uh, enable Kafka and enable Kafka streams. Uh, Kafka streams. So I will be using this uh, uh, private oh, template um, Kafka. So I will just generate some of the test data here in the nurse required arguments constructor. So in this case, my um, in dependency injection will work. And we know that the best thing is uh, dependency. When you do dependency injection, best thing that you can do is obviously constructor injection. Um, now, uh, in my um, int, int stream uh, range, so let's do from one to 10, uh, we will do each for each, um, and we will do what, uh, Kafka template send. Uh, we will be using topic, um, say input, how original, uh, and we will send two things. So we will do some of the test data for Q1, and we will do say a string uh, value of uh, value. Okay, so something like this, I will do add some type, so it will be understand, so we'll do string, string, just for simplicity, just we're pushing some of the key value uh, with lambda, and we even can do with method reference, I think. Uh, no? Can we do method reference here? Um, I think we can, right? Uh, no, it's okay. That's fine. So, and uh, in order to get some other data, we can use data for, say, another key. 
So what are we going to be doing here? We want to ca calculate uh, how many messages for a particular key were produced in this topic. It's just a very, very simple case. And uh, if I run this, um, right now it works against my local Kafka cluster. Um, streams application ID. Okay, so let me do this for for now. I just disable it because I, I'm not using Kafka streams at this moment, at, 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 at this particular second. Okay, it doesn't work because it doesn't know what to do. So we just say event listener uh, application started event dot class. So essentially, when my application start, uh, I will connect to my Kafka cluster. I will produce ten messages for in topic input, and I will uh, read messages in my topic out uh, input and write messages in topic input. Uh, yeah, so just trust me, it will work like this. Um, we're not going to do any consumer for now. Uh, let's start. run this once again. So uh, it was uh, two, 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 two. leader uh, input is not available. So let's see. Um, if I go here and say uh, Kafka topics, if I was able to create this auto creation works, um, Kafka console consumer. Uh, okay, so we're gonna be string uh, and value also string, and we will be using this one for topic called input. Oh, sorry. Yep, this is why. This is why you don't want to have a uh, auto creation enabled because when you do typo, um, it will create topic inputs and now we have a uh, multiple typos input. Uh, and we should have a, yeah, this is what we expected. So we want to have a, a, the count of these numbers. The same thing I showed you with this uh, assembly type of, uh, assembly type of, uh, uh, um, assembly type of code in, um, in, my previous, in my previous slide. Now, let's do some processing here. Uh, how we can do that? So let's enable this back and let's call it uh, class uh, uh, counter, right? <laughs> uh, we're going to be count some stuff. Uh, and uh, public uh, void um, count. We will do this uh, streams builder. Uh, streams builder. Builder. So the way how um, there's some interesting stuff is uh, core component, and we will do outwire. So Spring Boot will help us to uh, basically with configurations, and uh, so we can do not think about this configuration stuff. So the way how um, oh I'm sorry, the way how the Kafka streams uh, works, it's um, it's it provides these like opinionated API that allows you to turn topic into stream where you can start performing some interesting operations. So in this particular case, since we write this data into topic that we called uh, input, input, um, we need to specify what kind of data we have in this topic. So consumed with allows us to create um, uh, or configure this consumer with particular serializer or deserializer. So in this case, string, um, String survey, and uh, we will do uh, new string survey. Since we're going to be using this multiple times, let's create this one string survey. Uh, we're going to be using for reading the keys, and we're going to be using this for reading values. The similar thing that we did here in um, our uh, console consumer, we're using the same same survey, serializer, deserializer. Uh, so now, next thing that we need to do is to group by key. In this case, we get a grouped key, uh, grouped stream, and uh, based on that, we can perform count. And after that, we need to turn it into stream, and we just do two uh, topic. Uh, uh, grouped by count. Oops. And uh, let's say produced with, uh, let's do this uh, key is going to be our value. Um, 
and uh, so it's gonna be string survey string survey and long survey uh, we're gonna be doing this so that's it so this is it this is all that you need to do here um that's that's uh that's that's whole thing that I showed you in the slides. And I was explaining the thing in the slides more that I was actually writing the code for, for this application. So let's take a look if this will work. So in order to make it work, I need to just have application um, application ID, let's call it meetup. So in this case, it will not um, throw me error that the application ID was not created. Now, and uh, so if I will do this, if I run this, so it switched to running, and if I will go here and I'll say uh, group, uh, if I'll try to read this topic, so result will be placed on the topic. So what I can see, I don't see anything, right? So there's uh, there's nothing uh, uh, there's nothing happened here for some reasons, um, and I will explain uh, in a couple seconds. But let's wait until we'll see some, some results here. Yeah, this is exactly what we expected. Why we have a 20? Because we run this first time and because consumer group didn't exist before, it started reading topic from the very beginning. So in this way, we once we run this application first time, we generated 10 events in one key and 10 events with another key. Um, and um, and uh, the second time we run this, we generated the same number of events because this code this particular code will be executed two times where we like multiple times when we run this application. Now, why it is take me so so long <laughs> to get this result? And the answer here is Java is slow. No, I'm just kidding. Java is not slow and it's nothing to do with Java here. So essentially Kafka streams uh, uh, have some certain optimizations and have certain um, uh, configurations in mind in order to perform, like gives you like a sane, um, uh, sane defaults. But sometimes you just want to have a result as, as fast as possible, uh, specifically for meetups, people want to see results immediately. So in this case, what we can do here, uh, we do um, streams, um, uh, streams, and we will do uh, properties, and um, we need to have a commit interval of min milliseconds. So um, this code, if I would say, say uh, every say two seconds. So in this case, the, this code, this particular code will be uh, committed, the result would be flushed into this topic every two seconds. So if I will restart, um, if I will do this, uh, um, restart this application once again, and uh, we will see this result much faster. So we should see like a 30 in, in a second. Up and running, one, two, three. And it's it's here. It's it's a little bit faster because application was starting and things like that. So I you can you can uh, you can play around uh, for with this and let me show you a couple of things before I switch back to slides. Um, if I'll do so, um, couple new topics. So this is my uh, mistake, uh, but this is our input topic. This is our output topic. And there's some interesting co topic called the changelog. And this is changelog topic that was created by Kafka Streams application in order to um, the, the replicate state of this count. So you don't see it, but inside Kafka Streams, there's a small database that actually runs uh, and uh, 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 stores all the counts that we're performing over here. And uh, in order to make this uh, uh, fault tolerant, uh, this database is replicated through Kafka and this change log topic is used to replicate these changes. I'm um, not gonna touch this very uh, deeply today, but this is something that you need to know um, in, 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 your, um, in your Kafka Streams work. All right, so let me switch back to my slides. And uh, uh, so we see some code and I hope you have this expression, wow, wow that was really fast and really um, interesting and <laughs> what the hell just happened. But um, let me talk a little bit about this uh, framework of yours that you want to develop, if you want to develop, if you're a framework developer and you get paid by the lines of code that you wrote. 
Um, yeah, like, except, uh, um, except, um, yeah, hopefully you're not writing this code, you're just putting a bunch of comments, which is good, but these comments need to be called documentation. All right, so the Kafka Streams is uh, um, the, every, like if you develop framework, if you develop framework from, uh, from scratch, it needs to be scalable, you need to be able to, um, to handle multiple uh, inputs, <laughs> multiple outputs of your, um, of, of, of your system, so you should be able to scale this up. So Kafka Streams supports this. We can start multiple instances of Kafka Streams application, and after that, we will uh, spread the load, and uh, the, the the data will be uh, divided, and we can execute this in um, in in a parallel. Uh, elastically scalable. Uh, this stuff that is. Pretty important these days, since we're doing the clouds and since we're doing um, all sorts of like economy around, um, you know, maybe expanding our compute resources while we need this and the shrink it back when we don't, like in situations where we need to have a handle like huge spikes, um, elasticity of the framework that handles the stream processing needs would be um, essential. Uh, full tolerance, uh, we don't want to lose the data, right? So the data is uh, important for our application and we don't need to, we don't want to lose it. Stateful uh, things that I showed you. It's easy when you need to do the simple filtering. You get the message, if it's applicable to predicate, you will pass it. If not, you, uh, um, you just reject this message. Uh, but every time when you do things like grouping and any type of aggregation, counts and all sorts of things like min and max and all this kind of thing. Um, in this case, a state is essential. You need to, uh, you should be able to uh, so, so, so save the state. Plus uh, distributed uh, system um, requires distributed computation framework. Uh, and where was the compute in this case? Who can tell me? Like when I was computing my, uh, my stuff, like if I, like if I switch back, my computing here, I always know that computing is part of my application. It is here. Um, and I always know how to debug it because I can uh, debug my local thing. So if I would use the, the things, um, things of the past, like uh, um, the, like Hadoop, like you don't know where where is computing. It's somewhere in the cluster, which some node will execute this. Um, you don't you don't really know this. Um, so the uh, where is my state? In this case, I showed you that uh, it state can be uh, can be local to your application, but also it can be replicated through through the Kafka. And where's the, where's 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 my code? Your code is your code. You can run this everywhere. And in the past, you might face like this this type of situation, right? So a few words about the Kafka streams in in a in a, in a second. So and we will switch to uh, Q and A. So essentially, it's not running inside the Kafka. Even though I'm running Kafka locally and I'm running my Kafka streams application locally, they are not running on the same JVM per se. Nothing is running inside your Kafka cluster. Um, Kafka cluster is uh, busy enough in order to support some of the cool things like replication, uh, fault tolerance, uh, ISRs, and all these kind of things. So your code is running uh, outside. And uh, constantly reading. So your Kafka Streams application is constantly up and running. So if I will switch back to um, here, uh, my application is in running state. So once it's in running state, meaning that this application is still constantly pulling from a particular, constantly pulling from particular topic, and after that, uh, performing all these computation things, uh, that message will go through. So the message will go through this uh, topology. Once the new message will arrive, it will go here, 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 and after that, it end up in the group by counts topic. So it uh, should be fairly straightforward. Now, in terms of scalability, uh, you can spin up uh, um, as many um, as many as you want instances of uh, Kafka Streams application. Ooh, it's some nasty um, <laughs> some nasty formatting uh, uh, some nasty formatting uh, thing happened. Um, and uh, 
there's interesting like caveat here you cannot run more than um you cannot run more instances than number of input topic partitions so in this case um uh, we can talk we can talk like in in the future about uh, scalability of Kafka streams applications um yeah let us know if you're interested in this type of topic or i can bring this out in um in one of my live streams as a matter of fact uh but um like right now i cannot run more instances than my my uh, number of topics because if uh, um my current topic was created with one partition which is usually you know never happens uh in the real life because in real life you want to start with some some not even substantial but at least some sane number of uh partition in order to you know make things work um smoothly um and like let's let's revisit some more architectures that we had in the past so in the past you might have uh, some processing cluster that you submit your job there and uh, this system will use just shared storage and based on the shared storage um, my system will read this data like my some restful service and expose this data back um, i didn't show this today i did show this today but uh, kafka streams also has this cool ability that this internal store that for example collects all these um uh like accounts uh this store can be exposed with simple rest api maybe i should show it uh uh next time but uh just like believe me this um this guy um so this count uh this uh count might have this uh meetup chi stream aggregating uh state store this is like default name which can be obviously modified um this store can be exposed uh through some sort of api so essentially your application might become not only your processing thing but also your internal database small database so each application might have this ability to um, expose this aggregated uh, state uh, through some sort of api so you don't need to uh, move this in into say um i'm sorry into some uh, like a shared database somewhere here so your services can uh, can access here so your application with kafka streams application you will include this together um and you can use this uh, with any technology uh, um like of, of your choice and i've seen that like some people mentioned uh, like previous version of the java uh and someone has mentioned kubernetes and the things like that so yeah that's uh uh the running uh, kafka streams inside the container uh it is fairly straightforward and you can um you can you can use this stuff uh to run this pretty much everywhere um i don't know if anyone is doing mesos these days write down comments if you're doing mesos these days all right so uh the things that kafka stream does um we are working internally uh, like we have a uh, multiple people who uh, work here at confluent and they like contributing to open source as on on a daily basis so they writing data data uh, they writing code for uh, kafka streams and uh, those team is extremely um extremely smart people that uh, help to push this framework forward that's uh, that's uh, super incredible uh, so it's why open source is still is still um, on the rise and it's very important for um for the health of of ecosystem um not only because we are saying so but we know that multiple uh, people multiple organization using kafka streams you should go and check the kafka summit videos from from this year there's a, a few awesome talks like one from activision um is highly recommended uh, to watch about like kafka streams in production that's that's pretty cool talk um so uh apart from this i didn't touch some of the um advanced uh components of the stream processing for example windowing um since yeah like this this over here so things that um you might want to use uh, or like let's think about this so just step back 
um, when you have a messages that arrive in um, when you have a multiple messages that arrive into um, your Kafka topic and uh, you don't know where the things will end. However, sometimes you need to know um, at least like what's going to be result the last uh, last five minutes, last 10 minutes. So you need to imply apply some sort of like uh, the boundaries, some sort of uh, um, yeah boundaries for your infinite uh, stream of events. So that's why the windowing operations like and perform some aggregation on this window. So, so what was the count of these messages within the last five seconds or, or, or whatnot. So this is, uh, this is important and Kafka Streams has this built in. Um, some, uh, you can implement some of the like a very sophisticated logic dealing with this windowing. There's different uh, semantics of dealing with time. Um, and if you want to have a, like a processing time versus uh, event time, uh, say like your event time, that is kind of like a part of timestamp. Uh, and uh, inside the message, but the message arrived out of order maybe in the Kafka topic. So how you can deal with this type of events, um, this type of situation, or you want to do deduplication. So all these things can be handled with Kafka streams and it's, um, it is pretty awesome. Um, so, um, and uh, one of the cool things about um, this guy, Many of you heard about this and you heard about exactly one's processing, but not many of you actually know that uh, one of the reason why exactly one processing was introduced is to have exactly one's processing in Kafka streams. And in Kafka streams now, it's extremely easy to use it. So in this case, you just go there and do exactly one's enable true and you're good to go. So um, it's, it's, it just works and many internal mechanics, they were done um, they were done in a way to support this in Kafka stream. So it is absolutely, um, absolutely useful for uh, many, uh, many of you if you need to exactly one processing. Now, I'm pretty much done here. If you want to learn more, there is no better resource than developer.confluent.io. Developer.confluent.io is my second favorite place on the internet. If you want to learn about my first favorite place on the internet, you should go to this link and watch the full video where I'm talking about my first and second favorite place on the internet. But jokes aside, Confluent, uh, developer.confluent.io um, includes pretty cool set of things. And uh, one of the things that I'm personally proud of, it's the website called uh, Kafka Tutorials. If you didn't see it, if you want to learn more, if you want to learn with code, if you're enjoying looking into the code and follow some of the code instructions, you should definitely check Kafka Tutorials, kafka-tutorials.confluent.io, or you can go to developer.confluent.io and you will find a link to Kafka Tutorials. It's, it's amazing, it's pretty awesome. I highly recommend you to look on this one. Um, that's it for today. I'm open for uh, some of the questions. Thank you so much uh, for, um, tuning in today. Uh, as always, have a nice day. And now it is time for open mic, I guess. <clears throat> if you want to unmute yourself and ask the question, uh, feel free, I will be here to answer those. Question, how the stream handle reading from multiple partition? It just does. Um, there is no, you're not specifying from what partition you're reading, you're reading from uh, from particular topic. So this is where, um, this is where you are specifying this. So essentially um, you're just specifying that topic that you're reading and after that uh, the Kafka streams will figure out how to read from particular partition. So essentially the way how it works, um, it will create a, say uh, one consumer per, or like a, it's not maybe accurate to say. So one task per partition. So what is task? Task is the unit of, uh, or like instance, instance, of a topology. So uh, topo 
topology. So this is a topology. Topo topology. And uh, and so um, it will create instance of this topology per particular uh, part partition per uh, task. Why it's done the, the way it's done? It, because uh, there's no, we don't want to have a additional um, logic of synchronizing those partitions. So, or like a check-in if someone is already reading from this partition. So where is there's one task per partition, we know that no one will be reading from this instance. So no one will be reading here. So um, partition story is hidden from you here. So and uh, I believe it's a it's a it's a good thing, right? So you don't need to uh, uh, you don't need to worry about this uh, the partitions here. So I hope it makes sense. Does Kafka also um, queue mode where messages can have uh, only one consumer? Yeah, just create a topic with one uh, one partition. So in this case, you might have. Uh, just like one uh, one consumer per uh, per topic. So in this case, you will have a kind of like a global uh, uh, <laughs> global ordering. I would say, yeah, that's uh, that's 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 you can do potentially. Um, there's a question. Uh, do you have any comments uh, on Kafka streams versus Case SQL? I do, but I would rather not because there is some um, my colleagues who did this much better. So if you go to Kafka Summit, and it was past events, and we say London 2019, and we go to the session recording slides available, uh, and we go in here, and we're looking for Danny Trefagin talk, and when you go here went to ksql and when to leave a k stream that would be uh, my choice to answer this question <laughs> so um yeah uh, she she's doing a great job explaining this uh with uh with the pictures and giving you like fantastic overview of this topic there's a uh, um uh, I, you know, it's, it's a, I'm not saying it's a matter of choice or like it's a matter of um, the, uh, how you call it? Uh, I forgot the word on what I was looking for. But essentially, um, there, there is some t t types of applications where um, you need to perform more Java logic and where you can do things much faster with KSQL DB. So I, I prefer use both in uh, different use cases but it's um um it can be uh, it can be used like together so uh, check 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 the dennis um uh, dennis talk all right is it possible to run streams application in multiple nodes yes it's possible and you should as a matter of fact, I um, I was doing a um, I was doing this uh, uh, live stream some time ago. Um, let's do this. Um, if you go to my channel, let's do this one. Oops. Uh, if you go to my channel, this is my YouTube channel. If you go to playlist called um, live streams, and uh, uh, view full playlist and one of the things that I was talking about is um, how to run Kafka streams on Kubernetes. So if you will go and watch this, you will get the idea how you can scale this and uh, run multiple instances and things like that. So that would be um, that would be my uh, just don't, don't that would be my answer here. So you can go here and just do share, copy, and you will get this here. 
um, I use Kubernetes as just an example. It just simply allows me to scale up and down on my uh, Kafka Streams application. But um, it's not a prerequisite. You can do this with whatever uh, tool that you use to start multiple uh, instances of the same application. <clears throat> Let me scroll down if I see if I missed any uh, questions in the very beginning. <clears throat> Yep, I feel that I catch up with all the questions. All the questions are caught up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, do not forget to tune in to uh, live streams. It's on our YouTube channel, so hope I will see Oh, actually, today would be an interesting topic. I, I will be trying to spin up uh, some of the Java client for uh, KSQL DB, which is kind of interesting, and it's uh, somehow uh, somehow related to the question that uh, some people were asked about KSQL uh, versus Kafka streams or whatnot. So, yeah. All right. Have a, as uh, and as always, have a nice day. <laughs>